we in the UK probably only needed a, a, a plant with half the capacity. So um, what they did was they said, well, let's build a bigger plant and, and we will sell the additional capacity to overseas customers. We were in the transport business. Now shipping fresh fuel from Springfields out to Japan was a straightforward freight operation on a, just on a, an ocean going ship. Bringing back the spent fuel was a different undertaking altogether. But once we'd got the experience of that and transporting that fuel by ship from Japan back to Barrow, that was the origins of a business. The genius, however, was to take that and envisage it on a much, much bigger scale. We were providing a service um, and if every, every country that was contracted eventually to put the material through either the French plant or through, through Thorpe had been required to do it in their own country, there would have been reprocessing facilities springing up in every country in the world. These things aren't signed quickly. You know, reprocessing contracts are very, very long-term discussions. It's a case of building very good long-term relationships with, uh, with the customers. I really enjoyed working with the overseas uh, customers and in particular the Japanese and learning their cultures. But to understand there is no word in the Japanese language for no and being a straight talking West Cumbrian, uh, an electrician, you know, if I asked somebody did they want something out and they could either say yes or no but to actually understand that a Japanese customer would feel that it was disrespectful to say no, I had to actually understand that their response might actually be telling me no, even though they hadn't used the language for no. I also remember one occasion being very proud that we'd actually gone ahead on programme. And when I uh, told this to our Japanese customers, the reaction wasn't quite what I expected. They expected to be on programme, not behind it, not ahead of it. And if you're behind or ahead, you don't wait for a meeting to say, you know, the, you're ahead, and I, I was really elated to be able to give them some good news, but it wasn't received like that. There are not many countries now which are engaging in the reprocessing of spent nuclear fuel. For many, that's to say most, whether for economic reasons or political reasons, um, in some countries, spent fuel is being, is being regarded as a strategic asset and is being stored, and in others it's regarded as a waste and it's being uh, prepared for disposal as a waste.